If we're interested in conserving mass in our system to keep track of where the fluid is flowing, we first need to define a control volume and we can define that by drawing its surface. Once we've drawn that surface, then we can keep track of everything that goes either in or out through that surface. So we've got our control volume. It's got this symbol capital V with a stroke through it to make sure we don't mistake it for velocity. So the change in the amount of mass inside the control volume will be equal to the mass flow into the control volume minus the mass flow out of the control volume. So that's just an expression in words of what we mean by conservation of mass. If more mass goes in than goes out, there'll be a positive increase in the amount of mass inside that control volume. And this is the same kind of control volume analysis that you did in your thermodynamics course. So the change, the delta of the integral, triple integral to get volume over the entire control volume of the mass per unit volume times the incremental element of volume, dV. So this is a small chunk of mass you get from volume to mass by multiplying by density integrated over the whole region of interest gives us the mass and the change in that tells us how much the mass is increasing or decreasing. We now have a surface integral like the integral we looked at before for getting the flow across a surface. If we've got flow going in then this normal vector is pointing outwards so flow going in has the negative v dot n just like we had before dA and this time we're multiplying by density to turn this volume into a mass and this density may vary depending on where we are around the control volume. Now as it turns out when we go over to somewhere where there's flow coming out of the control volume exactly the same equation occurs to give us the negative mass out, the v dot n switches signs depending on whether the v is pointing inwards or outwards. The normal vector is always pointing outwards from the surface. So this is the amount of mass in per unit time minus the amount of mass out per unit time. So if we multiply it by delta t, that will give us the total mass in or out. And if there's more mass flowing out, this will wind up being a negative number. If there's more mass coming in, this will wind up being a positive number. Take the delta t to the other side, make everything small in terms of your integration, and we wind up with the rate of change with time of the mass inside the control volume plus the total of the flows in and out must be equal to zero. So if there's no net flow in and out, i.e. there's the same amount going in as coming out, then there's no change in the stored mass inside the control volume. Now we can make this simpler. If the density is constant, i.e. usually if the flow is incompressible, then for a fixed control volume, we can have d rho v dt plus the integral over the surface, rho v perpendicular dA equal to zero. And the densities will cancel out. So we wind up with just a volumetric conservation equation because conserving volume and conserving mass wind up meaning the same thing. If the flow is steady and not changing with time, then this term will go away. And we're just left with an integral over the surface area saying that the flows in and out must balance. And if all of the flows are perpendicular to our surface areas, because we've chosen to draw our control volume intelligently, and we use just average velocities, then we need to just look at all the inlets and outlets and look at the velocity times the area and make sure that that's equal to zero. Everything that goes in has to come out.